Hey, so uh, I wasn't even in- intending to record here, but I was just doing the maze and it said something approaches and there's a car, motor hunter and highway flames. That makes sense. Um, hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hylix 2. If you missed our last episode, what are you doing here? But for real, um, last episode I discovered this huge long maze that feels randomly generated, but as it happens isn't. Um, I found a couple of things in it. But, uh, ultimately I was like, I'll do this off screen, and I found this. And to be clear, it even said, something approacheth. You need to help him. A la, like a Dragon Age, I guess? Dragon Quest? Damn it, again. That's more health than I expected. Cool. Uh, what now? Oh, they die at least. That's good. Okay, just normal attack. That's fine. Wait, what am I doing? I should kill. I should go for the kill. This is a boss. This is a special, unique enemy I haven't seen before. So I feel justified in saying, like, in, in going for um, using items. So if people die, I'll use items. Besides, this might even supposed to be, like, the super boss, so... Oh, good. Thank you. practically kind of nice of him the amount of damage that I'm doing with um, Pungorma's lightning is getting pretty appreciable which I really really like Zappo yeah look at that oh that feels good unfortunately it is now done I'm out of MP and even though I said that I could use items I don't know how much I'll need him. Wait, I'll use Disillusion on him. Nice. I like that he does run over. Like, he doesn't use the special move, run over. He does it. All right, not bad. Motor Hunter, huh? Six antennas. Meat and multi-coffee. Mason? Okay. Okay. So, I've only been playing it for a little bit. I mean, not a little bit, but... Ooh, another cloud germ. Well, let me just recheck these areas. Fine by me, then. Oh, I think I know where I am. Yep, there's that. I was looking for a specific key to get up to the top of this. And it looks as though I didn't get it.
Unless I missed it. <laughs> wow. That's pretty great. So Wayne's getting slower again. So yeah, I've basically just been like mashing around trying to like basically just exterior collisions my way through this. It hasn't been like perfect. It hasn't been great even. But you know, it's fine. The guide I'm using even describes this area as annoying. I was down here. Damn it. Which I think is kind of funny. I will admit, it is kind of an annoying, an annoying area. Yeah, I was down here too. Got those chests even. Like, I'm not entirely sure why this is in here. Like, it's not like I'm waiting on the, like, deep, intense lore implications of, of, of like, a Hylex, you know? Okay, this just leads me back down to the cheese hole. So at one point I flipped a switch that like dragged the the f like walls over to me so I could walk on them. I later unflipped that switch. It was over here, I think. These are weird. That looks like hieroglyphics. I wonder if you could make an RPG in the Doom engine. Wouldn't that be kind of interesting? I've always thought it'd be kind of funny if like, like you're playing a first person shooter, you look at an enemy, you click the mouse to fire uh, your handgun, and then a little like d20 rolls, and then like a d8 rolls, and then you do damage, and then he takes his turn. The idea of like a hybrid, like integrated RPG system has always interested me. Not even necessarily because it'd be good. Just it'd be interesting. I've talked a lot about game development, uh, especially in Hylix, because it's so indie, I feel like I could have made it. Should I just like get a guide and like skip this whole area? I kind of feel like I should. Because I'm now going in circles again. Yep, going in circles. Hey, I found that switch. So yeah, this makes it so like this whole area gets remixed. You can pull it and, and undo all of your hard work. I don't know why you would. That's kind of weird that they let you do that. Like this area is hard enough as it is. There's a lot of stuff that I wonder about. Like, because sometimes in game design, it's like, did they know? They, they had to know that this was unfun, right? And I don't mean that this is unfun, but like, let's, have I been here before? Have I been here before? But like, for example, just something that's like a slog, like, um, I 
I'm literally just trying to think of a game that's hard to play. What? Okay, I'm glad I found that. <laughs> Did I miss that on my first time down there, or is that a different area? Wow. I really do love games that look like they could have just come out on the PS1. Just... Yeah, so some of them they let you they don't let you like re rejig with after you've like flipped the switch. And I think like if you're doing the correct thing, I feel like that should be what you do. Granted there are some things where it's like, oh well you you did this thing, but like you did this like key area, you didn't get this key item so this area is inaccessible and it's like, well why didn't you just make it so I could get that before coming here, you know? And like, this is a really hard area to navigate because everything is white. <laughs> like I really don't know where I, I should be going. Okay, this is the, ch this is like the basement floor, like the first one down. It's like a Aina game, actually, or Aina if you prefer. Joel G's Ina. E N A. Man, imagine if Mason Lindroth and Joel G teamed up to make a weird game. Apparently, Joel G's making an Aina game or something. For those who don't know, Joel G's just an animator, and Aina is a, a surreal. <coughs> Goodness, pardon me. And it is a surreal. I guess that hole's the only place I haven't gone up here, right? And it's just a surreal animation that he made. Well, it's a series of animations. You may have seen her around. She's just that girl who has like a uh, half blue and half yellow body. Blue half is sad and depressive. Yellow half is happy. She has multiple voice actors. Uh, some of her is like round and curvy and some of her is like jagged and geometric. But there are, I think, three Ana animations. And uh, most of them have a like thing where they're like um where they feel like weird 90s pc games and that's how this feels this feels like i'm playing an like a like an ana episode damn it i'm here again that hole must have been one that i already dropped into And, like, the problem is that, like, because I've been in here for, like, an hour already, I think. Have I been in here an hour? I've been in here for 50 minutes about exactly. Like, I want to go fast and do it faster, but, like, that doesn't make it happen, you know? That doesn't do it better. It's just kind of frustrating, because it's, like, it's a good game, but, like, this is just weird. Is that correct? Is that what I want to be happening? Oh, hey, I made it back to the entrance, at least.
All right, now I don't want this to drop me into the cheese hall. Damn it. I like the tiles on the floor. I kind of wish that I could like look at them better. But I'm just stuck with my vision like perfectly forward. Turning only at nine. This chest is like taunting me, dude. And again, like a map would go down real smooth, guys. Okay, so yeah, earlier I did this. And I was able to come up here and open that. But I need the deep key. And so I like reflipped that first switch in order to try and maybe find the deep key. But yeah, this part is like kind of rough, you know? Like, the novelty of like, oh cool, it's like a weird like little classic like Ultima Dungeon wears off pretty quickly and like pretty quickly doesn't really... Like a novelty that goes away in what I describe as pretty quickly means that like Man, I've been in here for an hour. Like, as I mentioned, I have been inside these walls for an hour of my, like, real life. And yeah, like, I haven't found much new. Like, the things that I have shown so far are that one boss fight and uh but yeah that one boss fight was new damn it see now I'm I'm going too fast and I'm making mistakes that one's on me can't blame that on Mason So, I want to flip this switch, and I want it to not ruin things. It did. <laughs> Just, what the hell, you know? This kind of kills the pacing as well. Um, I'm gonna go find a guide, like a like a really big one. My uh, my patience has run out. I've been here for like an hour and a half. I loaded some saves. I uh, tried going backwards. I I looked at a guide and like like I looked at the guide even and like I literally can't stand to look at any more of the white like. like white mush walls. Sorry, I had to focus on that. But yeah, like I, I, I think I physically could not stand any more of that. Which is really a shame, because like the game's still really good. Like it's just I, I mean, I do know. I was going to say I don't know, but I do know. There's just a lot in this game that is like... Maybe it's just new for the sake of new. Because when you're making a game, obviously everyone's like... Hey, maybe we should do it like this. Like... 
No, should we? Really? But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, it just sometimes it's a little hard to balance, I guess. But like, if they wanted to make the game like longer, like, wouldn't the whole game be like that? And it's so weird that this like side content thing is, is like the bad part, you know? Because that is all just explicitly like side content that is... Like, it may as well be non-candy. You can probably beat the game no problem without it. I mean, I don't know about no problem, but maybe. I have a lot of money, by the way. I seem to not be able to get rid of my money. Um, and it would be interesting if you could spend money on meat. Like, if you could just buy meat with cash. For those not uh, up on the channel, uh, I have been playing Salt and Sanctuary, and in it... You can buy salt, which is the game's XP, with gold, the game's currency. And it's a Dark Souls, so you lose, you know, those on death. Damn it, damn it. It's a Dark Souls, so you lose um, all your salt. And, like, I think 9% of your money, 11% of your money. It's some percentile. But you lose it on death. Um, you just automatically flat lose cash. And you... Lose uh, your salt when you die. And this is almost the opposite, where dying is the only way to level up. But it would be kind of interesting... But in um, Salt and Sanctuary, a thing that you can do is... Uh, in order to make sure that you're not wasting your money, you can essentially burn it by just buying salt items and then later you can turn that salt into level ups but until you do it remains in your pocket and does not uh, get burnt on death which is pretty interesting and it would be kind of cool if like because there's a slight level of preparation that goes into buying items it's like hey what do we want to get what do we need you know so that's Hylum Xylum. Oh, and they're they're draining the water, yeah. We saw those in the afterlife as well. So I guess that's what we made over there, right? Can we Z this faster? But yeah, I remember there being three other sages, or three sages total. And that area was called the Sage's Labyrinth. Interesting. So we just like come aboard. Big bones. The swap for bones was kind of weird as well. I don't necessarily agree, uh, disagree with that one. But like, I always thought that it was kind of funny that like, for all the weird like, Mars Volta and. Uh, Frank Zappa style weirdness or the strange archaic language used that the money was just called bucks you know view X's edifice, fortress of fog last and a third in the halls that until recently held this ship do I have does it tell me if I have the other sage tokens
I don't see them, which means that I've missed the... Damn it. Ooh. Damn it. Of course. Well, maybe I can go and get the other sage tokens. Unless they are, of course, in there. Which would be really annoying. I don't want to have to go back and get the deep key. I really don't want to have to go and do that. If I can just find the Sage of Brains here, then that'll be okay. Malta juice. What should I call this episode? Like, peeking into bonus content but not doing it? Bonus content and cowardice. This is weird. Like, this is another view of the airship. Like, I imagine it's probably because it's like a separate map. Oh, look, you can really see uh, it's known as a, a little, like, skirt hold thing there. Um... Yeah, I think that demonstrates, to me at least, that uh, the bonus content in this game is something that I don't have the gusto for, so I'll probably do that later. Um, I mean, I won't do it. It probably just gives me a good move, and the move is probably cool and everything, but like, I don't know, man. You know, I'll be happy to beat this game, although I will say... Uh, I have another four episodes, like, in the schedule, so I'm going to have to find something to fill time. Because <laughs> this is the ninth episode. Yep, sure is. And, uh, ooh. <laughs> I, I I had this scheduled up to Hylix part 14. Um, and maybe I would have used that, because the original Hylix was um, shorter episodes, but I ended up having longer episodes, so. But I digress. Um I should finish this. I've been Alfred. This has been Hylix 2. I've been looking at the bonus content, but uh, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for coming. And please, play this game on your own. It'll be a very, very good way in order to get the stuff because, you know, I'm not showing it. But yeah, sorry about that. But have a good day, everyone. Bye.